The NASCAR Cup Series has revealed their format for the 2024 Bushlight Clash at the Coliseum. That takes place on February 4th. Before we get into this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at John Trent Racing. Let's get into this. This is over at NASCAR.com where they laid out what the format for the Clash of the Coliseum will be, and it takes place on February 4th. The main event will be a 150-lap exhibition feature uh, on February 4th on Sunday, and instead of having 27 cars as they did last year, they are whittling the field down to 23. I think that is probably a good decision. That seems to be in accord to what you see in a lot of dirt late models. The fields are usually around 24. Obviously, depending on the track size, you might make, uh, might make the field a little bit bigger, but usually on those those bull rings they keep it to 24 so and i would i would wager that this los angeles the los angeles memorial coliseum track is just a quarter mile asphalt track so i think reducing the number of cars is probably a good thing uh but let's get into this here uh, on track festivities for the non points event begin with three practice sessions on saturday with up to 40 entrants split into three groups each competitor's Fastest time, uh, fastest lap time from their final practice session will determine the starting lineup for the four heat races. The first significant alteration of this event's format uh, after prior years featured single round, single car qualifying to set heat lineups. So I actually like this idea. I think this is kind of how they do it in the dirt lay miles. This is kind of what we saw them do at the Wild West shootout last weekend. And I guess for the, all of last week is that they have the qualifying laps and there's a, a qualifying times and they get out there and they do the qualifying. They're all out on the same time. Obviously, they're talking about this being a practice session, so it wouldn't be a specific qualifying session uh, with just one car on the track, but it looks like they're going to have multiple cars on the track and those will be the practice session. It doesn't say how long. Uh, the practice sessions are going to be so it's unclear how how much it will be like a uh, a dirt late model race if uh, if that if that's the case so because uh, the dirt late models they usually have dirt lap uh, hot laps uh, which is like their practice session which they they get about three or four maybe five laps I guess uh, to get out there and, and really do a little bit of a practice figure out what the track is going to look like and pick out what tire they're going to use and then they get out there for qualifying. And they run, I think, maybe two or three laps qualifying. Uh, I think it's two, but they, they technically run three because one is like a uh, a warm up lap, and then they take the they take the top, the best lap of the of the two. So it's interesting to see that this practice session will be the well they'll take the top uh, time from the practice session. So I kind of like that. I think that that's that's what that's how it should be. I think that's a good change. Uh, and then they go on and say Saturdays for 25 lap heat races will have up to 10 drivers per heat. The fast, fastest practice time in the final session earns pole position in heat one, second fastest on pole for heat two, third fastest on pole for heat three, and fourth fastest in practice on pole for heat four, and so on. Only green flag laps will count in each of the heat races with no overtime allotment. Again, very similar to what we saw at the Wild West shootout and what we see in uh, dirt late models. Uh, the top five finishers in each heat will automatically advance to Sunday night's main event. While the drivers who finish a below fifth in each heat race will advance to Sunday's af Sunday afternoon's uh, 75 lap last chance qualifier, starting position for the last chance qualifier will be determined by finishing order from the heat races. The top two finishers in the last chance qualifier will advance to the clash and start 21st and 22nd, uh, respectively. Like the heat races, only a green flag laps will count with no overtime. So I like that as well. It is interesting that they're taking two finishers in a last chance qualifier. Usually it's winner take all. And you have to win to get in, uh, but they're taking the top two. So uh, it, it makes it a little bit more. I think that makes it more interesting. It'll probably be a big race for, for second place, maybe uh, for, because that will be the uh, <laughs> that's that's the that's the position that you need to get in. So I'll be watching second place uh, closely uh, for, for that race. And then it says the 23rd and final position on in the grid for the clash is reserved for the driver who finished highest in the 2023 season point standings and did not transfer via the heat races for the last chance qualifier. So I like that you do have a kind of a provisional based on points from 2023. I think that is a, a good move. And then Ryan Blaney is locked in no matter what happens to him. Obviously, like he would be locked in with the provisional because he is the highest in the point standings. So, uh, but I like that he's locked in uh, no matter what. So uh, I guess they're, they're just kind of restating the same thing there, but uh, it's good. Your champion should be locked in and he should, he should be able to get into this kind of uh, all-star type event that they've got going on here. Uh, so this has the stage for the 2024 rendition scheduled for 150 laps. 
Under the Lights in the Heart of Los Angeles. It will take place at 8 p.m. Eastern, February 4th on Fox. So, and then they go through and break down uh, the positions for the heat races and where they will start uh, for the Sunday uh, Sunday night race. So, uh, looks 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 like a lot of fun. Be interested to see how it goes. Um, I think the first se- the first year was was much better than the second year. So we'll see how the racing is. Um, they they made some changes to the short track package. We'll see if that's made a difference. Uh, haven't really heard any good things about that, but we'll see uh, because our short track package has been uh, pretty poor uh, to say to say the least uh, over the past couple of years with this uh, with this new car. So hopefully they get that get that fixed because I think the short track races are really where it's at. Uh, that does give you some of the best racing I think in the country. That's the stuff that I like, whether it's on dirt or on asphalt. The Cars Tour, my local track down at Dominion, or uh, the <clears throat> the World of Outlaws, or uh, Luke's Oil Dirt Late Models, and then on the premier events, obviously like the Gateway Dirt Nationals, Wild West Shootout, etc. That's the stuff where I think has some of the best racing. Um, so hopefully they get that figured out so we do get some good racing, but we'll see. Uh, it can't be worse than last year. It can't be worse than last year, right? Because I don't think last year's race was very good, if I recall. But uh, let me know what you guys make of this new format, what you're expecting for the clash at the Coliseum on February 4th. Let me know in the comments below.